Good evening, everyone, and a very, very warm welcome. My name is Carolyn Ward, and it's my honor and my privilege to facilitate this evening. We certainly like to welcome the hundreds of people that certainly are in Victoria and Melbourne, which is the epicenter of the calm in the city, but also from other places around the world. I'd also now like to introduce Her Excellency, the Honourable Linda Desso, Governor of Victoria, to provide the opening comments. The Governor was sworn in as Victoria's 29th Governor and first female in this role on the 1st of July 2015. Prior to her appointment, um, she had a distinguished career in the law, including serving as a judge in the Family Court of Victoria, of Australia for 18 years. She's also been actively engaged in a wide range of community organisations, including as the Commissioner of the AFL, President of the Melbourne Festival, and a trustee of the National Gallery of Victoria. Welcome. Thank you so much. And can I acknowledge uh, the Lord Mayor, Bishop Huggins and other faith leaders, all the organisers of CALM in the city and everyone tuned in to this important event. And can I also acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which I'm now sitting and pay my respects to elders past and present and to any elders gathered with us this afternoon. Well, it was in the middle of last year that Bishop Huggins and Professor Shields spoke to me about participating in this event. Of course, we didn't envisage then how the world would in the meantime change. We couldn't have envisaged then just how especially the message of peace would resonate at this difficult time, of the dimensions that it would come to encompass and of the fact that in a crisis, we really are all in it together. It makes this gathering, I think, particularly timely. There's no doubt at all that a pandemic really does test us in our state, in our nation and right across the world. It tests us on every level, personally, spiritually and economically. We've seen how it can provoke us to turn against each other, to scramble for resources, to focus on blame. But we have also seen that the fight against a common enemy, the virus, can bring us closer together. We've seen the heroes who so selflessly work to care for us, to provide for us and to guide us. The scientists who manage to work seamlessly across borders the very many who've shown kindness to complete strangers, and the good people who stand up for those who struggle to speak for themselves. We have, across these difficult months, truly seen the peacemakers. And they've shown us that we have a choice, a choice not only as to how we fight this enemy, but a choice, choice too as to how we how we choose to rebuild our communities and our economies. In a year when we've been confronted by uncertainty, dislocation and fear, we've seen the need to look beyond ourselves, not to turn against each other, but rather to turn towards each other and towards something bigger than ourselves. We can and we must I think now grasp the opportunity to honestly confront the cracks and the fault lines that have been brought into sharp focus for us, to ask ourselves how best they can be mended, how best we can rebuild, how best we can recover to be stronger and better than before. I have no doubt at all that a shared resolve for compassionate, calm and peaceful communities will underpin the much longed for success in our recovery, whether it's our spiritual recovery or our nation's economic recovery. Thank you so much to the organisers of this event for their vision and their commitment to 
a cause and a practice that touches every one of us. Thank you too to the Victorian Multicultural Commission for their tangible support. And thank you to each one of you for committing to shared peace together. And finally, as the Governor of Victoria, in the words of our state motto, now more than ever, I wish each one of you peace and prosperity. Thank you. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. I'd like to now introduce Bishop Philip Huggins, the President of the National Council of Churches Australia, to share some reflections for today. Welcome. Well, thank you very much to the Governor for that beautiful introduction. Let me just offer three thoughts. The first of them is, as the saints remind us, our prayers and our meditations hold up the world. So whilst in one way this seems a ceremonial occasion, it's also deep in the purpose of our spiritual work, our spiritual practice. We understand that our prayers and meditations help make the world more peaceful. And a second little thought, what we're doing today, is it not a sign of the coming unity of the whole human family? Are we not kind of showing the way? Are we not portraying what's in the divine imagination that the whole human family should flourish together in peace and harmony, a unity in diversity, a unity of nations, the United Nations? And then thirdly, one of the great UN Secretary Generals, Doug Hammarskjöld, would say often that the whole point of the human rights regime, the human rights declaration, the disarmament and development systems of the UN, uh, the work on climate change, many other things, all of that had a particular purpose, which was to rid the world of fear so that people could trust that they could live free of fear. So as we come now to our times of prayer and meditations, that's our prayer, that our whole human family can live without fear and flourish together in peace and harmony. And it's so important that we convey that hope, that optimism to our young people to lift their spirits and give them confidence about the future that they inherit. Peace be with you. Thank you so much, Bishop Huggins. I'd like to now introduce Sister Genti. Sister Genti is the European Director of the Bromical Murrays. She's a lifelong international emissary of peace who's joining us today from the UK. Welcome, Sister Genti. Your Excellency, Governor of Victoria, thank you for your kind words, words filled with much compassion and wisdom. And what I would like to share now is just a few thoughts on the subject of healing, because healing is so important for each one of us personally, individually, and all of us together as the human family, so that then truly peace can come into this world of ours. And my experience tells me that the power of love of the creator and love from the creator is that which can heal human hearts. Each one of, of us carries trauma and sorrow from the past. So many things happen in each one's lives. But as we open ourselves up through the awareness of the inner being, coming to the awareness of the inner self, then in that awareness of the inner being, I can connect and experience the power of the love from the creator so that my hurt and sorrow finishes. It has been said that a hurt person is going to hurt another person. And this is the reality of our world. And so as I allow God's love to heal me, then I can be an instrument to heal others and allow them also to experience the power of that unconditional love which can also bring about transformation. And as we heal ourselves and each other, 
surely we become peaceful we come back to our original state of peace but yes our hope our guarantee is that this is the future of the world we are moving towards a world of oneness one family one planet one home and the awareness of peace being our natural state of being together om shanti thank you thank you so much sister janti so now we move into the meditation part of the evening and i will be introducing inviting and introducing 15 leaders from victoria to light a candle for peace and community and this will be followed by a, a guided reflective meditation on peace during which i'll ask you also to light your own candle at home too if you don't have a candle you can light it in your mind or in your heart and this is in the spirit of shaping peace together so let's begin remembering we are in this together is the significance of our connectedness across the entire world even though here we are in Australia I'd now like to invite Rabanit Elise Borgi from Shira Hadasha Melbourne to light the first candle Bhaktadas, Chairperson of Faith Communities, Council of Victoria, and representative of the Hindu community of Victoria. Dr. Ruth Gawler, General Practitioner and Meditation Teacher. Charlie Hogg, Director of the Brahma Kumaris, Australia. Bishop Philip Huggins, President of the National Council of Churches Australia. Sister Jayanti, European Director of the Brahma Kumaris UK. Dr. Mohammed Mohideen, President of the Islamic Council of Australia, of Victoria. Asha Parkman, President, Meditation Australia. Victor Purton, Chief Optimism Officer, the Centre for Optimism. Dr. Tammy Roos, Founder of Love Your Mind. Rachel Shields, descendant of the first peoples of this land. A Welwan and Gamila Roy woman. Jasbir Singh Surupal, chairman of the Sikh Interfaith Council of Victoria. Reverend Ian Smith, 
Executive Officer, Victorian Council of Churches. Venerable Chi Kuang Sunim, Abbess of the Son Center, King Lake. Mojan Tosif, External Affairs Representative, Baha'i Community of Victoria. And we invite you, depending on your screen, to use gallery mode as our guest meditators will be meditating with us over the next 10 minutes. If you're on a smaller screen, then you can choose to swipe. So this is a very beautiful and sacred moment that we all share together today. Your peace. Our peace. World peace. It's impossible really when we come to silence to experience anything other than oneness. to have a sense that every heart in the world seeks love. Every mind in the world longs for peace. Every single soul delights at the innocence of a child. Can we not be one? And as you find yourself comfortably wherever you are, Physically, we're separate. But it's truly just a thought, just an impulse. Just a hope. make us feel as one. A 
field of peace. connects us all. And I wonder if right now you could have the sense of opening your heart to a world of healing, a world of peace. And one heart meets another. And in that meeting, a smile appears on our face. So smile. Two hearts meet two more. Peace in our hearts, peace in our minds, peace in our world. Thank you, everyone. I'd like to welcome now the Right Honourable, the Lord Mayor of Melbourne, Sally Cap, to provide the closing reflections for this event. Thank you, Caroline, and thank you to everybody. This has been so lovely this afternoon. What a brilliant way to finish our UN uh, Day of Peace. Uh, and for many people around the world, they are just starting. Uh, it's my genu genuine pleasure and it is my honour to represent the City of Melbourne uh, to be part of today's United Nations International Day of Peace celebration here in Melbourne. I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which the city of Melbourne is gathered, the Boomerang and the Woiwurrung Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation and pay our respects to their elders past and present. We've had so many special guests and leaders as part of this event today. I acknowledge all of you and I thank you for the amazing leadership that you are providing uh, during this time of turmoil here in Melbourne. This day of peace is more valued than ever. Uh, the United Nations International Day of Peace reminds us how remarkable our city and its people really are. Melbourne is a shining example of what modern cities can be. A place uh, with an exceptional quality of life. I'm just looking for some more light. I'm so sorry. I don't know how my lighting all of a sudden disappeared, uh, but please know that I'm, I'm here with a big smile. Uh, we are a place with an exceptional quality of life. And for the most part, we have a very peaceful, tolerant and harmonious community. As you all know, we are one of the world's most multicultural cities. We are home to people from more than uh, 200 different 
cultural backgrounds, 230 languages spoken and more than 135 faiths practiced. We are very diverse, it's a strength of ours, but we know that we are also all one Melbourne and we are very proud of that. My hope is for Melbourne to continue to, to grow to be the most peaceful and harmonious city in the world. We all have a role to play in that. And of course, the theme this year is shaping peace together, particularly poignant at a time when we are all facing the shared challenge of the pandemic. Uh, and there's never been a better time for us to come together and show solidarity and strength. We stand together as a city, also with the United Nations against attempts to use the virus as a way to promote discrimination or hatred. Discrimination, whether displayed through views or actions that incite hatred or harm against anyone has no place here in Melbourne. And we stand with the United Nations on that. The City of Melbourne is proud to support the work of CALM in the city and this event to commemorate and strengthen the ideals of peace within and among all nations and people. Thank you for organising this amazing event and thank you to you all for participating. Everyone in our community deserves a strong sense of connection and belonging of dignity and purpose. Your work is key to us achieving this and your work is appreciated. I hope your United Nations International Day of Peace has been a serene and happy one. And thank you again for this lovely event. Thank you so much, Lord Mayor. So on behalf of the organisers, I'd also like to thank the supporting organisations and in particular, Commissioner Vivian Nugent, Chairperson of the Victorian Multicultural Commission, and to Vice Chancellor Duncan Maskell of the University of Melbourne for his support and positive endorsement of this event. Also, to thank you as a community of peacemakers who have taken the time this evening to lend your hearts and minds to shape peace together. In terms of a follow-up, uh, the Faith Council of Communities Victoria have put together a very beautiful video, various faith leaders who are sharing messages of hope, and this is going to be sent to you. But I'd like to invite uh, the representative, the chairperson, Bhakta Das, to just share a few words about this video, if you would. Thank you, Caroline. Representing all my spiritual sisters and brothers, the various faith traditions from the Faith Community Council of Victoria, I invite you all to view our new video presentation, which offers a message of hope for all Victorians. Each and every one of us is confronted with this pandemic and is struggling in our own ways with its complexities. In this video, our faith leaders sincerely express a profound and united message offering strength and support it is our desire and prayer that these simple messages of hope will in some way ease the burden of those who view it. Thanks, Caroline. Thanks so much, Dr. Das. I look forward to seeing that, I think, more than ever, you know, when we come together and we have hope in our hearts and uh, the sense of this solidarity of spirit really is possible to face anything. And I love the words of the Lord Mayor about Melbourne being one of the great, it is always one of the great livable cities of the world, one of the most livable cities. And what if it was to be one of the most peaceful cities as well, peace filled. So that brings us to a close. And on behalf of the organizers, as I said, to thank all our wonderful invited guests and especially to all of you who've come together to create this peaceful place this afternoon. Even though we're all in many different places, our hearts are in one. So thank you, good evening, and we'll see you again next year for sure, and maybe at some other community events between now and then. Goodbye. <laughs>